Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how to implement the stepper class using steps. So what is a step class? I'm sure you've been on an application or a website where you are performing some action and it has small individual steps and the title one, two, three, four, once you've done the first one, you can click continue, submit something along the line, you'll take it to the next step, the next step, the next step. So it's just a great way of you know, easing the user through the process. And that's basically all the stepper is. The step is each individual step so what we're going to do is put stepper here and in here we are going to have steps but for steps what we're going to do is create a variable outside of here it's going to be list it can be a list of step or steps and i'm going to call this stps i'll just call it st or I'll just call it steps equals and now what we are going to put is an array so we are going to put like so you could put you know it like so it's not really you know needed I'll, I'll leave it there and what we do is put a step in here and it's done in a linear fashion so the first step is step one the second step is step two etc so in, in in here there's a few different things that you can mess around with and we are interested in the content and the title and the step state for us you obviously is active if it's not active that means maybe you need to do something else in the application before you can proceed and subtitle is very similar to title so Let's do these two. So for the title, I'm going to put text. I'm, I'm literally just going to say step one. I'm just going to keep it simple. And for child, no, it wasn't child. It was content. I'm going to put some more text. But there'll be like a visual difference. So I'm going to say content of step. I'm going to say no. Instruction for step one. Okay, so now... What I'm gonna do is duplicate this. So we got like let's say five of them. So three, four, five, and let me just update all this. So two, three, four, five, and let me do the same for here. Two, three, four, five, and now we can literally put here steps. So if we save that, let's see what we get. So there we go. We got you know five different steps as you see there's a slight format and you know we didn't put any of this this icon is built in with continue and cancel buttons at the moment unless we actually specifically program them they will not do anything so what we want to do is what we want to do is put the current step and the current step we are going to create a variable for this so we're going to create a variable it's going to be an int and i'm going to call it underscore current step equals zero so zero is just the first step remember computer started zero and i'm going to put underscore current step so if i was to let's say make this a two that would be the third step as you can see it's changed but we want to you know add all of the button functionality so you go to on step continue which is the continue button so when this is clicked we want to set the state and this is what we're going to do with this is is first actually i'm not even going to do this yet you can say or underscore current step plus plus so you just increase it by one let's see what we get and i do want to change oh let me just do a copy start Okay, so if I click continue, goes to the next step, goes to the next step with a nice animation. We are, we're on the last step. Boom, we get an error because we have not factored in the length. We have to do that ourselves. Luckily, because we've created this as a list, we can literally get the length. So in here, if we say if, if underscore current step is less than steps dot length. And remember the length will return you know in this case five because there are five steps but remember computing stuff you know range between zero to four for five so we want it if it's less than four and only then are we going to increment it we're going to need to take away one 
And if that is true, then we can increment it. Otherwise, we won't increment it. So, do, 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 do. Okay, let me just do a hot restart. That will fix the problem. There we go. Click continue. Click continue. Click continue. Click continue. And at the last one, it doesn't do anything. For the last one, you could have an if statement as an extra test way to do that. So, check if it is the last one. If it is, then you could potentially move to a different page. You know, you could get rid of all of this. You can do whatever you want. Maybe submit the form, whatever it is. At the moment, the no cancel button implementation. That's what I want you to do as an extra test. A little clue. Here we go. So there's on step cancel and on step tap. On step cancel is when you click the cancel button. I also want you to, instead of taking or adding one, take away one. But remember, when it gets to zero, you got to make sure you handle that. Accordingly. So as an extra task, have a look at on step cancel. On step tap, which accepts an integer parameter, is triggered when I literally just click on one of the steps. So what you could do is using the integer parameter, you could literally open up that particular step. And that is it for this video on the stepper and steps. If you have any questions, feel free to pop me a message. And as usual, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.